Hello there, welcome back to this Sage 50 Cloud training course. If you've joined this course here, please find the first video, the introductory video to this course and start from the beginning because each video follows on one from another. In the previous video, we looked at the nominal ledger, the nominal module. I went through nominal codes, create new codes, editing current codes, filtering the information and some other aspects of this ledger or this module. As mentioned, we'll come back to this ledger at the end of this course and look at these more advanced features. At the moment, I'm just covering the basics just to give you a foundation of using the software. In this video, we're going to start on the customer module. So I've clicked on customers. This is the sales ledger. If your screen doesn't look like this, it could be that you need to click list as mentioned in the previous video. It could be that you have dashboards or process maps enabled. Just find lists and click on lists, the customer list and this screen will appear. This is a list of the customers on Sage 50 Cloud. The list is currently empty because I have no customers on the software, but that's going to soon change because that's one of the things we're going to do in this video. So how do we create a new customer on Sage 50 Cloud? We simply go to the top left here and click on new. This box will appear and we can enter the customer information. So the first thing we need to do is enter an account reference. So let's say that our first customer is going to be Sandman Supplies. The customer reference could be SAM001. Let's move down to company name. So Sandman Supplies. Enter a balance from their account if you're moving over from previous software or Excel, something like that. But most of the time when you add a new customer to the software, the balance will be zero because they haven't had any invoices yet. The address for the customer, we can just fill this in with all sorts of lettering. I'm just gonna do this quickly, just as an example, but you'd put in the customer's address here with a postcode, the customer VAT number, and the contact information. The more information you put on this record, the more useful this record's going to be in future. So I suggest that if you have all the information for this page, then you enter it. So if you do have a contact, let's just do Sarah Norton. You might have a trade contact as well, or it might be the same person. Telephone number. A secondary telephone number. A fax number. Their website. social media accounts and email accounts that you want to send letters and statements to if you want to use the email feature on the software. So once that's entered, you can then click on the next tab here, which is defaults. There are certain defaults that I suggest that you enter on this tab. The default will fill in information automatically in future. So if we set the default nominal code for sales south, let's say this customer is based in the south and we sell a lot to them. If we use that as the default, every time we record an invoice with this customer, it will bring up 4001 automatically. It will just save us doing that um, in future. It can save us a bit of time. You can also have a default currency and a default tax code. For whatever reason, if you don't charge VAT, you could use a 0% VAT sales tax rather than the 20% or whatever the current rate is. There are more defaults under credit control. You can set a credit limit. 
So let's say the credit limit is 2,500. If you set a credit limit, then the account will flash red and notify you when this customer has reached their credit limit. You can enter payment terms such as 30 days, so 30 days after invoice date. There are lots of options here. I suggest that you just have a look and play around. As mentioned, the more information you can enter on these tabs, the better. It's going to help you in future. There's a great memo tab here. If you want to make some notes about this customer, you can enter the information in this memo tab. It will save it for you, create a record, and you can refer back to it later. Perhaps there's some notes you want to make about this customer, perhaps some dates, some goals you have with this customer, um, dates to visit them, to provide more sales, whatever it is, you can list that here. If you work in credit control, the memo tab is great also for listing people you contact or creating some sort of record of credit control contact in the past. It's just a great place to make some notes about this customer. Once you're ready, just click save and it will save all that information to Sage 50 Cloud. And you can see now on my customer list, we've got Sandman Supplies, the balance on their account, their credit limit, the contact and their phone number. If we ever want to go back and edit any of the details or change the details on this account, we can double click on the account and this account will appear. If they've changed address, for example, we can change that and simply click save. If you don't want to double click, you can simply highlight the account and click edit. The same box will appear and you can make changes to the customer. Let's add just one more customer. Let's say this customer is Google. So we could go, we could do G double O zero zero one. Fill in the details such as the contact details, address details, etc. Once again, I'm just making all of this up. This is purely for an example. VAT number, contact details, social media accounts, email addresses if you want to send emails from Sage such as automatically send invoices and statements, defaults such as the sales code and tax code, and then credit control such as agreeing terms, credit limit, payment days, and things like that. Once you're happy, just click save and the customer will be saved to Sage Cloud 50 or Sage 50 Cloud. The best thing to do is to just play around with the software. You can't really make a mess of things. So the best thing to do is just try this yourself, add a new customer, fill in the details and see how it goes. As mentioned, the more information you put in, the more you'll get out of the software. So the more data you put in, the more useful it will be to you in future. Now, if we double click on one of these customer accounts, such as Sandman Supplies, you'll see that there's an activity tab just like there was with the nominal accounts. If I click on activity, it's currently blank, but once we have some invoices and payments on this customer's account, it will show here on the activity tab. And we'll come back to this a bit later. In the next video, I will go through adding invoices, credit notes, and payments on the customer account.